What's up guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to bring you an awesome video telling you exactly how to emulate the Nintendo Switch on your iPhone, iPad, or any other device. Before I get into all the details, it would mean a lot if you could leave a like and help more people find this tutorial. There is a lot of misinformation surrounding this topic, and by leaving a like, you're helping someone else find an actual helpful video. This method uses a service called Shadow, and what Shadow does is stream a full desktop computer to your mobile device, and surprisingly, a Quest and Apple TV headset as well. Basically, there is a computer in the cloud that you can have access to, and it gives you your own fully powered desktop. This service can be used for a lot more than just this one use case. It can be used for gaming and playing AAA titles on really underpowered devices. But before you decide if this method is right for you, there are some pros and cons that I would like to lay out before we start. Starting with pros, uh, one of the biggest ones would be that this is the only way I've been able to successfully emulate the Switch onto any of my devices after trying hours of different methods. There are a lot of fake tutorials out there that make you download apps or do surveys to complete the process, but these are fake. This is the only method I've been able to find that actually works on iOS. Another pro, as I mentioned earlier, is that this is a full desktop, so you can do much more than just play the Switch. You have a full desktop, so you can play any desktop game. I've played Black Ops 2 on my iPad, and it works fine. And obviously, one of the biggest pros of this method is that it is much cheaper than buying a Nintendo Switch and paying for the games. Now, for the cons, the biggest one by far is that this method costs around $25 to $30 a month for the Shadow service. If you have Honey installed, then you should be able to get about $5 off, making about $25. But as I said before, this is much cheaper than trying to buy a Nintendo Switch and games, which can run up to be $400 easy. The next con would be that you are streaming a computer from the cloud, so you will need a steady internet connection of at least above 15 megabytes per second, but preferably plugged in. Currently, I am not plugged in and I can play Nintendo Switch games totally fine, but playing first person shooters can get a little bit laggy, just enough to where you'd rather have a plugged in connection. The last con would be that this method is pretty complicated, so if you're not super tech savvy, this might be pretty hard to follow. Um, you're definitely going to want a keyboard, so if you can borrow someone's laptop to set the process up, from on, there on out, you can just use your phone as the emulator but you will want a keyboard to at least initially start the process. If you don't have access to a keyboard though, I will show you how you can do it on the phone. It's just gonna take a little bit longer and be more complicated. All right, so now we'll go over to the actual tutorial process. So you're first gonna go to your web browser and you're gonna wanna search up shadow, uh, shadow streaming or shadow gaming will pop up the right stuff. From there, you're going to want to go down to where it says system requirements. We're going to click on that and then go down and hit speed test. And then click continue, select your state and see if it uh, if your internet is compatible. So as you can see, my internet is more than good to do this, even though I am only on a wireless connection but if you want a better connection that's faster you're gonna to want to be plugged in as i said earlier so you're gonna to want to make an account and you're gonna to want to subscribe as i said if you have the honey um attachment then you should be able to get about five dollars off that popped up instantly for me so once you purchased it you should be taken to this screen and you're gonna to want to go over to where it says shadow applications on the left side and then download it for your device and if you are on a mobile device then just go to the app store and just type in shadow and download that app now there is a delay from when you purchase shadow and you can actually access it for me living in california my delay was about 30 minutes so basically just go through the normal installation process for your shadow app and let it launch once it launches you're going to want to log in all right 
right, so once it launches, you're gonna to wanna to log in and click start and just start off the process. It's gonna take a while to connect. For me, it usually takes about a minute. So as you can see, I'm in the app and now I'm in the full desktop. You're gonna to need to do go through the whole entire Windows 11 setup. I already did that, so I don't have to. Once you are on to Windows 11, go to the web browser, it doesn't have to be Chrome. I'm doing Chrome, obviously. And once you get in there, you're going to type in Yuzu, uh, Nintendo Switch, or Switch Emulator. You want to type in Yuzu, Nintendo Switch Emulator. Go to Downloads. You want to download Microsoft Visual C++ 2019 here. Click on that, should download and you're gonna go through your typical installation process. So the first time you open it, it'll probably show up with an error code, and when it does, it's fine, just exit out of it. You are going to want to go to the link in the description and download the file called prod keys. Once it's downloaded, as you can see, I have it downloaded down there. You're gonna to wanna to copy the file that says prod.key, Not that file. The one that says prod.keys. Now you're gonna to wanna to go up to your search bar and type in percent app data percent. Go to Yuzu, go to keys and paste that file that you just put in. Now you're gonna to wanna to make a file called ROM games, or it does not have that name in particular, but it needs to be a file where you keep all your games. Here I put mine in my documents so it's easy to find. Now, once you open it, you're gonna to want to double click where it says add ROMs, go to your new folder and click select. Now I can't actually show you how to get ROMs, but I'll leave a link in the description on how you can download Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. And from there, you'll be able to do that. Now you're gonna to wanna to go to emulation and configure. If you want to have the dark mode like I do, you're gonna to wanna to go to theme, dark, colorful, that's what I chose. And if you're interested in playing with a controller, you're going to want to collect, connect the controller to your device. Um, so if you're on a phone, you want to go into the phone settings and connect it through there. And it should show up there. Once it's connected, you'll get a notification on Shadow. Now, once it is connected, there will, under the tab that says input devices, you can tap on your controller and it will show up. If it doesn't show up, just click OK. and do it again and it should work see now it shows up um this is a ps4 controller but actually you're trying to write it as an xbox controller you shouldn't really mess with too many other settings everything works out pretty well and now you should be able to launch the app and play your games as you would want Once it loads up, if your controller is connected right, then you should just be able to click um, the button and start your game up. Uh, your controller should show up in this menu in Shadow. And you want to hit PlayStation Controllers Extended Compatibility if you're playing on a game that only has Xbox controller support, because it basically tells the computer your PS4 controller is an Xbox controller. As you can see, I'm playing very little lag. Um, now I'm just gonna show you guys really quick how to do it on your phone if you don't have a computer. On the phone, you are going to want to click Start Shadow when you open the app and after you logged in. The process again takes a while for the app to load. All right, see that I'm now in, but the problem is I don't have a keyboard. So if I click on the screen, it'll click, but then how do I type in my code? So I pinch in and I tap the shadow button and I click keyboard. And then from there, I have a keyboard I can press. I type in my password. And then in the top right, as you can see, there's a button that says, make your keyboard go away. You want to click that. And now I'm logged in. And it really helps to navigate it just by pinching and constantly zooming. To get the virtual controller, as you can see, that I have, I'll show you in a second, but there's a lot of the, the stuff that you will need. So for the virtual controller, you want to go from here to settings. And you want to go down to controls. 
uh, visual controller is the controller that's on the screen. You don't need that, obviously, if you have a PlayStation 4 controller connected or Xbox. Extended controller connection just helps with other apps. So, my controller should be working. And now I'm just going to go open up the emulator again. Okay, so I'm logged in and my controller is unresponsive. So how you fix this problem is you want to tap the shadow button on the very top. Oh, wait, no, sorry. You want to go to the, all the way to the left, tap configure, because it's looking for the wrong input. So here, then you want to go over to controls. And then under input device, you're going to want to select um, just whatever controller it says. So this one, it was Xbox controller or something one. And now my controls are working totally fine. I actually apply then OK. And now obviously the buttons don't quite match up, but the game works. And now you have a full emulator working on your thing. On your phone and it, it works pretty well it works really well actually especially for games that don't require quick reaction time like pokemon definitely a great emulator and i would 100 recommend this to anybody who wants to play pokemon but doesn't have 400 dollars to spend all right guys thank you so much for watching if this video helped you at all figure out how to do this please leave a like and help other people find this video um this took a lot of time and actually took a lot of money to make. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this coming out. Uh, thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.